Hello, my name is Chelsea and I am a full-time reseller. I sell on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. And I like to put up videos two to three times a week on reselling related content. That includes thrifting. I do some haul videos. I like to do some tips and trick videos. Um, I'm looking to put out a series for new resellers. So if you have questions about how to get started reselling on any of the three platforms, Poshmark, eBay, or Mercari, please put them down below because I am looking for video suggestions at this time. Anyway, today I am going to show you a little bit about my process of how I model pictures. So I model pictures for both Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. Then I'm gonna walk you through my modeling process and how I prepare myself to model some things and show you me modeling some pictures. So hopefully this video is helpful to you. If you're interested in this type of content, um, please subscribe and feel free to give this video a thumbs up if at any point in the video you like it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so a few things you're going to need or that are very helpful when you're modeling pictures is a tripod. Now I have your, <laughs> I have you on my tripod right now. Um, I have a, I'm videotaping this on my phone. I also take all of my pictures on my phone. So I have an iPhone. I bought a tripod specifically for my phone. So I'll link that down in the description below and anything I talk about in this video, as far as tools that you can buy, I'll link those in the description box as well. So I have this tripod and that's what I use to put my phone on for the video. And it comes with this handy dandy little clicker. Now this clicker is so key for getting good modeled shots. You could set a timer on your phone, but if you're trying to like rapid fire, get a bunch of pictures in a row, which is what I do. I take a lot of pictures and then I'll narrow it down to just a few that I really like. This clicker is really going to help you. So basically you just hook it up to your Bluetooth and click this button whenever you wanna take a picture and it snaps the picture. So that's really helpful. A few other things I like to have when I'm modeling clothing is a pair of jeans that fit me really well. Today I'm wearing a pair of my own jeans, but if I have in my haul from things that I bought recently, a pair of jeans that fit me, I will model in those jeans because the more items you're wearing or you're the person who's shopping your Poshmark closet or eBay store can actually buy, I think the better. Cause then you can put in your description, hey, these pants are also for sale or these earrings are for sale or the shoes that I'm wearing in this are for sale. So they can go check out the other listings. Let me get into it and show you some other things that I use. Um, I like to wear lip gloss when I am photographing just to give my lips some color. And for some of you that might be a given, I normally like never wear lip products. I am just not a fan, but I just use this. Um, I got it from Bath and Body Works. It's really nothing fancy. The better thing that you could probably wear would be a lip stain that is not going to damage your clothing because when I put this on, I have to be so careful when I change to like not get lip gloss on my clothes. I actually got lip gloss on a puffer jacket the other day and I could not get the stain out. I tried, I worked at it for a while and honestly I just gave up and I'm going to list it with the stain. So that was a bummer. So beware of lip gloss. Another thing I always wear when photographing is a pair of cool earrings. Um, if your face is not in the picture, it's kind of cool to see like some earrings kind of hanging down. Um, you can choose to put your face in the picture or not. Um, I do both. Like sometimes I'll put my face in the picture. Sometimes I won't. It just depends honestly how I'm feeling that day and how I look and whether I decided to put on makeup that day or not, whether or not my hair looks good. So that's kind of how I do it. But I do feel like pictures with faces, you, you kind of have you kind of put a person with the closet you're shopping or the eBay store you're shopping and you feel like more connected to that person when you can see their face in the listings. It's really up to you whether or not you want to show your face. Another thing I like to have is I just have this sleeveless white shirt. There's no details to it. Well, there's some lace on the bottom, but this is a good thing to have if you're modeling something like a skirt and you just need a simple top that's not going to steal the show so you can model a skirt or a pair of pants and give it the attention it deserves. So these are some of the things I use in every single time I model that help me um, model successfully. Something else I have that you definitely don't need to have when you start out but is very helpful is I have a lighting kit. I have box lights. There's one 
here and one here. So one is a little bit higher than the other and one is lower and they're at an angle to kind of give it even light. I also have a window right here. Now it's about to rain, so my lighting is not perfect today. I'm probably going to have to do a little bit more editing to my pictures than I normally do. But if it's a nice, beautiful, sunny day, I'm getting lighting from three different angles, which really helps with good lighting in your pictures. Now, if you don't have a lighting kit, if you're new to Poshmark, you're new to reselling, you're new to modeling your pictures, you may want to just hop outside and get some good model shots. Now for me, I thought there is nowhere good outside to model. So I was doing it up against like the side of my house, the side of my shed. Well, then I realized there's this corner in my yard where it's lots of foliage. It's lots of just greenery, some trees. And honestly, that made a really, really good background. It just looked really pretty. So just if you don't have the space inside your house to model, maybe look outside and get creative. Find a little corner of your yard that um, just has lots of greenery. It makes a really pretty backdrop. So there are some tips I have for modeling. Now let me get into um, my processes for modeling. Now I have <laughs> very defined processes for how I do everything. I am a re retired <laughs> teacher. I taught for six years and one thing that I was very adamant about as a teacher is we had procedures for everything. My students knew how they were supposed to ask to go to the bathroom. They knew how they were supposed to turn in their papers. They knew how they were supposed to do just about anything that we had to do in the classroom. So in my reselling business, I've de definitely implemented those procedures as well to help my job go smoothly. So I have a certain way that I model things and a certain way I deal with the clothes that I have to make modeling more successful. So I'm going to move my camera so I can show you my rack and how I set up my rack of clothing to make my modeling process more successful. All right, so before I model, I like to collect a rack or a section full of clothes to model to kind of make my time the most worth it. If I only model one to two things, then I'm going through the modeling process. I'm putting in all that effort just for a few items. So I like to collect kind of a haul of items that I'm going to model before I even begin. So these are items that I've set aside from the past week and I reserve this for one session, one day. So the other things that I photographed and listed this past week, those are already done and I've just set these aside. I hope that makes sense. So I try to make um, modeling the easiest by having items that I can kind of mix and match. This blouse could be worn with this skirt. I could also wear this blouse with the jeans I have on with this jacket over top or even this jean jacket. I have some maxi dresses that I can pair with the jean jacket. So I can kind of mix and match the items I have to model. So people, like I said, can see you modeling different things from your closet and maybe they'll go and shop. You know, if they see this shirt paired with that top, maybe they'll go and buy both. So I like to leave that option there. Now I've also have this kind of separated by category. So I have my shirts and blazers here. I have my dresses here and I have my skirts over here. No, these are out of order. Let me put that right where it goes. So um, now we are nice and sorted. So now I'm ready to model these items and show you how I do that process. So I decided that I'm going to start with my dresses. So I have them all here and they're hung up and ready to go. I'm going to pull out my um, measurement sheets. If you want to learn a little bit more about how I use these, you can check out my video. Um, it's titled, How I List Items, List and Inventory Items Fast on Poshmark. It's one of the first videos that I made. But anyway, I have this template that I'm going to use to take measurements of all of these dresses. Um, then I'm going to take pictures of the front and the back of each dress. And then I'll hang everything back up here and I'll get ready to model them. After I model each piece, I'll bag it up in its inventory bag and put the um, SKU number on the item so I know where to inventory it and weigh it and take a picture of the weight and everything. So I'll show you how I do that process here in just a moment.
Okay, so I just finished taking pictures of all of these. I took a picture of the front, the back, any details up close, the tag in the inner neck, and the tag on the inner hemline with the fabric content and details. I also took the measurements and I took photos of the measurements. Let me show you what that looks like. So this is what my photo measurement template looks like. You know, this dress had a um, high-low hem, so I showed, you know, this is the shorter part, this is the lower part. I cropped this to where it shows all measurements are taken in inches and approximate. That's what my photo looks like. This is my inventory number, and these are the four inventory numbers I have now. So now I have a picture saved that has the measurements and the inventory number of each item. So that way, after I model them, all I have to do is bag them up and I'll get my scale, I'll weigh it, and then I'll stick this inventory number to it. So it's all ready to be inventoried. It's got the measurements and it's ready to go. Now I'm going to put on my earrings and my lip gloss and I'm going to get into modeling these dresses. On a side note, before I even begin, I have two LuLaRoe dresses here. I normally do not pick up LuLaRoe. However, I came across what I thought were some decent patterns and a better style, and I figured I'd give them a shot. Um, they're not gonna sell for much, guys. I don't really recommend picking up LuLaRoe. I got these from the Goodwill outlet. I found a lot in the same size, so I figured if they're all size medium, maybe someone would bundle them. We'll have to see how they do. So I have my tripod set up right now to the level I want it to be to model with. So when I take the photos, I will mostly be in the shot and it can really focus on the dress rather than myself. Now, when I take pictures, it's in square mode. So this, these items you're seeing right here are not in the photo and you actually do see more of my face. So it's set at the level I need it to be, but when it's in square mode, it does pick up different angles than the video is showing. So what I try to do is I take a picture of the front of the dress and I'll normally put my hand on my hip and um, kind of angle it like that, make sure I smile. Then I'll get a picture of the side. Once again, you can kind of like cinch it in if it's a little bit oversized. And then you get a picture of the back, you get the idea. I also like to come close to the camera and get a picture like this so they can see the close up detailing, even though I got a picture of that earlier, it may fit differently when it's on. But for something oversized like this, it really does help to kind of cinch in the waist a little bit to get better shots. Also extending your leg can make you look a little taller in the photos where your legs are actually showing. <laughs> Okay, now this blazer is um, a little bit big on me and so is this dress, but when you're modeling, you can make things look like they fit you a little bit better. Just make sure you disclose in the listing that, you know, what your size is could really help the buyer to know that and then what size the item is. So I have this blazer that I'm going to model. I actually measured this earlier this week and took all the other pictures. I just wanted to get a few modeled shots of it to show how it can be styled with something modern. So I have this modern LuLaRoe dress and this vintage blazer. So I rolled up the sleeves to kind of show that cuff look that's really in. And you can kind of pull it up even like this because that's really the style and get some cool modeled shots where you're styling it different ways and kind of showing um, ways that you can make this vintage blazer look really cool and modern. Okay, so now that I'm done modeling all of these dresses, what I'm going to do is I'm going to individually bag them in my bagel bags. I'm going to put the inventory number that I've already assigned to each item when I took the measurements on the bags and I'm going to weigh them. So that way I'm getting out of the way all of my measurements, my inventory processes all in one fell swoop. Okay, so what I did here is I took my dress, I folded it in a nice roll. I put it in one of these bagel bags that I get from Walmart. It's like $3 for a hundred of them. I taped it shut with my tape and I put the inventory number that I'd already assigned to it on there. And now I'm just gonna take a picture of this so I know it weighs about eight ounces. So I'll probably round up to eight ounces to leave room for the weight of the poly mailer. All right, so there are all my items ready to be put into inventory. Everything has been measured, assigned a number, the weight has been taken, the pictures are done. So now they are really essentially ready to ship out as soon as they are listed and ready to go. Okay, so now I have the rest of my items that I'm going to model all up here ready to go. I have some jackets, a sweater, some shirts, and some skirts, but I'm going to model these items together. So I want to get measurements of all of these items and assign them their inventory number before I model them. After I have all the measurements taken, I've taken pictures of the front, back, 
inner tag and size tag of each item, I'll be ready to model these. I'd show you what my photograph process looks like. So right now I have my photos set in square mode. So in order to do that, you're just going to go to photos. You click, see where it says one-to-one, -one? I click square and I make sure it's in square mode. So it saves me some editing time later because Poshmark and Mercari are in square mode. eBay pictures look good in square mode. So I take all of my photos in square mode. Now that I have it there, I'm going to center the jacket in the picture, take a picture of the front. Now I'm going to come up close and get pictures of these tags. Front, back, <laughs> and um, that should be everything I need there. Get a close-up of these buttons since they do say Kelvin Klein on them. Now I'm going to get a picture of the cuffs. I'm going to flip her over, get a picture of the back. Get a picture of these details of the adjustable spot. I did notice there was a stain on the front, so I'm gonna get a close up of that stain right here, and I'm going to point to it in the picture just so my buyer knows that that stain is there. Okay, now I have my jacket hung back up and I'm just going to take a picture of the measurement like that. So now I have a saved photo of the measurements of this jacket in my phone. And the photos show up right after the pictures I have of the jacket. So that way I can remember, okay, this jacket has these measurements and I can see um, the inventory number as well. getting measurements of all of these things they have been assigned their inventory numbers now they are ready to be modeled so I'm going to pair these items together or separately and model them I think I'm going to start by wearing my jeans and wear modeling whatever I can that goes with the jeans and then I'll switch into the skirts and finish modeling those things up all right so I'm putting my camera on the tripod right now <laughs> and I have this jacket on and I am going to model this wonderful 70s piece. The first picture I'm going to take is gonna be of the front. Let me get my clicker ready. Yep, and I'm going to just snap a picture of the front like this, snap a picture of the side, get a picture of the back, side, and now I'm going to button it up, get a picture of it fully buttoned so they can see the fit of how it would look that way. and try to get like a bunch of different shots and then I'll pick which one I like the best later. Um, I'm gonna roll up the sleeves a bit, get a picture of it looking that way. Um, vintage items like this, I feel like are really important to model to kind of show how you could wear it in a modern way. So putting it with these jeans kind of shows you like, okay, I could wear this with jeans and make the 70s piece look more modern, all right? And there are all my pictures. Okay. So I got this vintage tee ready to model and what I decided to do to style it was I rolled up the sleeves a little bit and I did a little bit of a sloppy front tuck. So all I do for a front tuck is I take the front, <laughs> kind of like stick it in your jeans here and then kind of let the rest kind of fall around it. So there I have it and now I'm going to just take some modeled shots wearing this shirt. Since, you know, Halloween's around the corner, I figured it'd be a cool time to get, you know, some cool skeleton vintage shirts. This shirt's all stained up, but because it's vintage, people like stuff like that. So they will buy a nice stained up vintage shirt. This is from 1997, I believe it said. Um, yeah, 1997, Cotton Expressions in Chicago, Illinois. So I figured I could add some more value to it, especially on Poshmark, if I model it. All right, so now I have the same shirt on that I just modeled, but I have it on with the skirt. I did a little bit of a front tuck to kind of show um, off the skirt a little bit and how high-waisted it sits. This is a very cropped shirt, but because of um, the skirt, I can wear it high-waisted and yeah. So I just wanted to style it a little bit to kind of show the buyer a potential way of styling it. And now I'm going to lower my camera because I want to show off the skirt as well as the shirt. 
so that's a little bit more of a better angle. When I switch to square mode, it should show everything that I need to show. I just finished modeling the pictures and this is the last shirt that I tried on to model and I did style it with a couple of different things. I styled it with this skirt as well as another skirt to kind of show different ways that you could wear it. Just decide which ones look best and include those in the model picture. I also showed that there's different ways to wear the neckline. You could wear it tied with this bow or you could wear it unbuttoned and open so that way people could kind of get an idea of the different ways you can wear this shirt. Um, in this shirt, it definitely has very much of a cottage core aesthetic. So I would be sure to include those keywords inside of the listing. And yeah, so that is kind of how I model. I hope you got enough footage to kind of give you an idea of how you can model and just show the fit of something and show different ways that you could wear it to kind of inspire your buyer to, I don't know, play dress up, get clothes that's fun and vintage and just show them ways that they can wear something that otherwise they might not buy. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, I will show you a few more clips of how I like make um, collages of my modeled shots. Um, but as far as the modeling process right now, I'm done. The only thing I have left to do now is to take all of these items and put them in their inventory bags and weigh them and take pictures of the weight. So I'll have that when I go to list. All right, I have everything here in my inventory bag. It's been weighed, it's been measured, it's been modeled, it's been photographed, it's ready to go. So all that I have to do now is go through my pictures, pick which ones I want to use, and draft my listings. All right, so I'm getting ready to draft my listings in my Poshmark closet. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I would do that. So first things first is I wanna go through my pictures and I'm going to edit them to kind of lighten them up a bit because they are a bit dark. Actually, you know what? Before I edit them, I'm going to put it in the pic collage here. So I'm gonna go back to that dress. I'm gonna take the dress and I'm gonna do front and back, side by side, just like that. So that way the maxi dress is, you know, we're using the whole picture instead of just half of the picture. So I'll save that. All right, so I have those two saved. Now I'm gonna go find the two modeled shots that I like. And once again, since this is a really long dress, even when I'm modeling it, you're gonna see it that way. So I'm gonna pick a few of these and put those side by side as well. What I'll do is the front and then I'll show one with this blazer styled so they can see that, hey, this jacket could look really cute paired with this blazer that I have. You know, maybe I'll just leave my whole face in it because it's easier than cutting it out. So now you're seeing the dress paired with the blazer. And I'm just gonna cut off part of my arm there just because of the way the picture turned out. And I'll save it that way. Now I'm going to get the pictures of this dress front and back side by side. Try to make them around the same size. All right, so front and back, done. And now I'm gonna do a collage of a few modeled shots just for my cover photo front and back probably so they can see different ways that they can wear this dress. So this dress could be worn on or off the shoulder. So I'll try to get one of each of those to kind of show how you could style it. I think I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit closer on this one to show the dress because seeing my face twice is a little weird. All right, now let's get those modeled shots ready to go. So I think I'll do these two together. Maybe not that one, my face looks weird. Okay, so maybe I'll do one that's like close up so you can kind of see the detailing on it. And then the other one will just be of me modeling it. Sometimes I just like cutting my face out of it better. I just don't always feel like it's necessary to have my face in it. All right, so there we have it, done. And I'm just gonna lighten them. So I'm just gonna click on the picture, click edit, scroll over to this little thing that says brightness, 
and I'm going to increase the brightness of the picture like that and I'll do that with each picture. I won't edit all of them. I just do the cover photo and then this collage picture um, just to make it really stand out and look nice and light and bright. See how much better that looks. I'm hoping that these new filters that Poshmark is coming out with will be nice and bright. Maybe by the time this video comes out, they'll already have them and I won't have to do these steps. We can just use the filters that are supposedly coming in the Poshmark app. All right, and those are the pictures that I have so far. So we're done. All right, now that I have my pictures drafted, I'm going to click the cell button, photo button, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to create my listing. So I clicked on these two pictures of that dress and I'm going to finish drafting it. Here is the weight of that dress. I'm gonna click on that right there too. So I have that saved for my own personal reference. I'm gonna scroll up here, get all the other pictures of the dress that I have. I already have the front and back, so I don't need to click that again. And then I'll pick a few more modeled shots just because I can, because I have the room for it. Try to get a picture of the back here. I'm really bad at getting side and back pictures. They just don't turn out as well for me. Now I'm gonna see if any of them need cropping. This is a picture that I'm gonna be taking out so it doesn't really matter. Zoom in a little bit on this. I guess I can zoom in on this one to not get my plug in it right there. I'm going to zoom in here on these tag pictures. Okay, zoom in here. I don't like the look on my face, so I'm gonna zoom in. Hopefully get that tag. Eh, the plugs are just gonna have to show. It's fine, it's not the front picture. So this is gonna show the boxy fit. Even though it's not super flattering the way I modeled it, we're just gonna go with it. And here's a good one of the front of the dress. All right, so this is ready to save in my, as a draft in Poshmark. All right, I'm gonna keep that as a cover shot. Now I'm just gonna move a few pictures around. I'm gonna put this as last so I remember to delete it, put all the modeled pictures near the beginning. Um, I like to put the tag pictures near the end and at the very end have the measurements. See how it goes from you know the modeled pictures to the more detailed pictures in the tag. And then I have a text prediction save that I put NPL in and this pops up new Poshmark listing and um, it just saves me some time later so I don't have to type these things out. So now this item is ready to be saved in my drafts and I'll do this with all of my listings before I go to list them. So I hope that was helpful to you to show you how I save my drafts and how I pick my model shots and make collages. watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope maybe you learned some tips, some tricks that you can apply to your reselling business and modeling photos. If you model pictures and you have some tips for me that you'd like to share or for anyone else who views this video, feel free to comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends if you'd like to. And um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.